content farms. Is it all brain rods? Every video is live, not age restricted, fully monetized, and this channel is just profiting off of kids watching this. She will fully steal popular videos. Oh, uh, Sniper Wolf? Oh, credit, dude. And then often steal the top comments from that video and call it her joke. On Lanky Box's evil quest to monopolize kids' YouTube, they decided one channel wasn't enough. They've created at an least army. five channels to Yo. play YouTube recommendation system with garbage. YouTube content farms have gotten out of If hand. it's garbage, why are people watching it though? Now it looks something like this. Is and this AI? This. <laughs> the nightmare critters. How did we get here? When did content farms take over the platform and why Wait, people something People are making brain rot of puppy playtime? we should be worried about i'm visual venture and i'm sick right now so bear with me because i gotta get these videos out for you guys content farms he is content farming he's a youtube channel that cares more about Back quantity than quality they use the same style editing and concepts over and over to create an endless supply of videos it's just poppy playtime right Since they're able to post hundreds of videos yeah. a year youtube then rewards these channels for their consistency by pushing their content onto the algorithm these videos is that how it works to new viewers and put oh. on your home page and this type of content is even more prevalent with kids but what youtube doesn't seem to understand is that they've given creators a cheat code because there are so many of these videos being pushed out from the same channels the probability of going viral increases dramatically and since Ooh. these content farms only care about making money they could care less about creating good videos and just want to maximize the money flowing in but what they don't consider is how damaging this sort of content is for the platform especially it's not coco melon kids brain rock content for kids yes the easiest ways to get clicks on youtube target those who don't know any better the phantom kids, taxing kids the rizzler god the easiest to mass produce that's because kids like familiarity and all it takes is one popular superhero <laughs> yeah, or disney yeah. princess to get them to watch a video it's actually a technique that has helped a lot of games like fortnite gain so much popularity with younger audiences kids just like gravitate towards Oh, something's wrong with my eyes. As we've learned from the Elsa Gate situation, I keep seeing, I keep seeing is made with good intention, white specks. Especially not from content farms. So white specks in my eye. Make as, as much revenue as possible. They use questionable methods to keep kids watching. If you've been on YouTube lately, you've probably seen these characters. These I've never the seen these recognizable animated faces on the internet. The amazing digital circus is. I've a never heard of this. That started airing in 2023. Since I've been on YouTube for a long time. I've never seen this. Favorite. The show has over 300 and I don't watch million views on See, that's the difference, right? I don't watch stuff that uh that is made for children, right? So like why would any of this pop up on my feed? That episode and all the other episodes also have tens of millions of views, which is insane. Wacky it's such candy. A massive viewer base, a ton of fan-made content has started popping up on YouTube. I've Animations never seen any of this. Digital circus have flooded YouTube with some channels gaining millions of subscribers just from these fan-made videos. Although the amazing digital circus is more suited for a slightly older audience, it's become insanely popular with the kids. That's How? because of the fan-made animations who use clickbait titles and raunchy thumbnails to draw in younger viewers this channel is two million subscribers <laughs> and it's all just comic no bro like it, like content. you're you're actually helping you're helping the vtubers rise you're helping the vtubers rise with this one man like dude i think i think vtubers vtubers are appealing to children more often than adults like so so this is kind of like a hypocritical thing right vtubers like anime anime girls and all that so it's definitely advertised and marketed for like young teenagers right i mean that that has to be what it is there's no way like a hundred thousand people watching a vtuber stream are all adults dude like let's be for real and farming digital circus dude what is this what the hell is this? A 
another fandom facing the same problem is Poppy Playtime, which is a horror game. Oh, that went viral W Games. It over 77 yeah, W Games. On the gaming service Steam and a rating of 9 out of 10. But like Digital Circus, its online reputation was ruined because of fan-made content that's turned it from an indie success to the face of Brain Rot. These content farm channels post almost daily, if not multiple times a day, and all of their videos show these animated characters Bro, in inappropriate- Bro, like anytime I upload more than once a day, I don't get anything. So how, how were they releasing videos daily and then getting rewarded for that? I thought, I thought all your impressions go to one video and if you upload multiple, it splits up the impressions. And so like one video ends up getting the, the short end of the stick, you know, or, or the short straw. You know what I mean? I could be wrong. Appropriate scenarios. That's why I don't upload daily. These include shipping characters together or having characters fight each other. And all of these that and are animated in a way I stream that for extremely disturbing eight plus hours, so I just every can't. Every video is live, not age restricted, fully monetized, and this channel is just profiting off of kids watching this. Look at this. I mean, if it's original content that they're creating, I don't see the problem with it being fully monetized. Like, let's be for real here. If they're, if they're you know, supplying the demand for the market. I mean, what's the problem? Like, you can't, you can't just be saying this without, without like, you know, someone like me coming in, watching this and realizing that you're just jealous. I don't know what this is. I don't know what it is. I've never seen any of these like circus videos, animations, whatever. But like, it just comes off as like jealousy. You can hate it all you want, but if they're the ones creating the content, what's the problem? It's still a created, it's still like, they're creating the video. So again, it might be content farming, but if they're making it, it should be completely fine. This makes Skibbity Toilet look great. But think about it, right? It's, even Even Skibbity Toilet takes a long time to edit. Let's be for real. It's not, it's not like a whole, a whole army of editors editing that video. Like editing takes so long and, and animating something, animation takes even longer, dude, even longer. Like kudos, shout out to these guys, bro. Like, dude, uh, they, they work like MAPPA stu studio, MAPPA employees. We we watched a video on on someone recreating a one minute fight and it took him over forty hours to do. Oh my god! This Jack's palm knee because of Gangle's magic sketchbook. Not only are the videos and thumbnails suggestive, but the characters themselves are too. The original characters from Digital Circus and Poppy Playtime are usually aged up and redrawn in ways to make them seem more human-like, specifically- Yeah, I mean, people have been doing this with Pokemon forever. when it comes to certain features. And these two fandoms aren't the only ones that are dealing with this. Yeah. Almost every single- Hey, hey, form. Disney's known for doing this too, okay? Let's talk about let's talk about miss incredible all right and like majority of the moms in disney movies why are they caked up bro why for no reason for no reason whatsoever like let's be for real uh, disney's doing this too of media has its own disgusting kid-centric content farm you got minecraft fortnite and five nights at freddy's while some can argue that this is all just another category of brain rot the reality is much worse because not only is this content inappropriate but it's also encouraging kids to develop some horrible interests these are all and this isn't new okay i'm about to pull up some like 2012 brain rots all right it has not it has not changed. I think it's evolved. I think it's evolved brain rot. As you see on websites like DeviantArt. There's no way that exposing kids to weird content like this isn't Bro, what child is going to DeviantArt? Anyway, these content farms don't just ruin YouTube, but they also ruin the innocence of kids watching their videos. What? Since they're so accustomed to seeing inappropriate scenarios on screen, 
they've started to accept this kind of behavior and want to see it more. Once adults started finding these videos, they began reporting them to YouTube. But the problem is that even if YouTube deletes the videos or even the channel, other ones are created and post the same content again. These content farms have mastered how to get the most Ugh. out of the algorithm, so even if they start from scratch, their content just pulls kids in. By using questionable thumbnail and retention techniques, they manipulate kids into increasing oh. their views, comments, and likes. This causes YouTube to Is that a cheat code? out to more and more people. Call to action is me asking you to check out my video on the disturbing rise of brain rock content where i dive deep into these creepy animations but what these i thought that's what we were doing. doing is something else entirely they know that their audience is primarily kids who will do almost anything they say if they make it convincing enough that's why these content farms are able to rake in so many views because they put in stuff like this help me help me by creating CTAs like huh? these, it makes kids think that they have an impact on the video storyline. Kind of like in Dora the what? Explorer, where you say swipe or no swipey. As a kid, I just thought that I was helping Dora by saying that. These likes <laughs> boost their videos to even more. Even as a kid, I never thought that I was actually... I knew, I knew Dora was going to do it regardless. Okay. So, so is that, is that just like their fault? Is that their fault? Like, as a kid, I learned pretty early that, like, just like Dwayne The Rock Johnson, you never, you can never do wrong. Like, in his contract, he makes it to where he can never lose a fight. Like, I knew, I knew that about Dora. Like, she's always gonna beat Swiper. Swiper's always gonna get swiped away. Even as a kid. So is this, is this, whose fault is that, bruh? Dwayne The Paper? Yeah, yeah, yeah more feeds it's an endless cycle these content farms even use their comments to their advantage on alternate accounts they'll make comments like like if this video should be banned or use my comment as a wtf that i just watch button by pretending like they're criticizing the video they're able to get people to upvote their comment i think their idea is if the algorithm sees any sort of interaction on a video even negative the video performs better and it seems to work for them the harm what? of content farms Arms isn't just restricted to animated content because this next form of content could be just as damaging. The dark side of reaction content. Reaction content uh -oh. has grown to become one of the most well-known categories of content on YouTube. But as long as you're not watching movies, that should, should be fine. In fact, countless creators, especially smaller ones, have spoken up about how reactions are not content, but rather theft. Because some it's reactors not theft, are not, all, of course, don't add anything to the video, but rather... Just and that's the problem. That's the problem, okay? No, 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 look, 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 look. That's the problem. When, when you just sit here... When you just sit here and watch a 30 minute video, just, you know, not talking about it, not adding anything about it and changing it and twisting it into your, your content. That's where, that's where everyone has the issue with it. Yeah. There's kind of a gray area on what, what you need to do to make it transformative content. But again, like me pausing the video and just sitting here talking about this, that, that's kind of transforming it, right? I'm not one to sit here and say that just having chat on screen and then like having you guys sit here and talk about the video is transformative enough. That's not that's not what I'm saying. Just adding a webcam and then your chat on the screen should not be enough. It should not be enough to to make it your your content. That that would be considered theft. The the people that sit here and like they make breaks in in the video that they're watching and, and sit here and tackle on and add their own input to it they're transforming the content and i could be a uh, biased because that's what i do but if you just sit there and and watch the video bro don't upload that don't upload that 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 is literally theft man that that's taking their video and putting your face on it and, and just literally stealing like that's not okay that's where that's where the gray area of of react content is like i i don't know that's that's my view on that you you should never just sit here and just watch a video without making any any kind of attempt to to make it your own putting a twist on it 
just freeload off of someone else's content. Yeah, and to be that's clear, freeloading. The YouTuber is a reaction. Leeching. My videos are awesome. You guys provide value, commentary, and insight. What I'm focused yeah, see, on are exactly. the channels that provide absolutely no value. The war on reaction content farms has been raging on for the past few months because of popular influencers like... And, PC. and, you should never, never react to a movie. You should never react to something that happened on TV. You should never be able to do stuff like that. Like the the people that sit here and, and put their hard work into their videos, if you're just watching it and you're uploading it, bro, you don't deserve the platform. That's not hard work to just sit and watch a video. Adding on and, and making sure that your input is is tackled on, on top of it, that's where that's where like it's not hard work okay if i'm being real it, it's just it changes it but it also makes it to where like maybe maybe you guys would have never watched this video right you guys would have it would have never shown up on your feed or anything like that and and i'm uploading it to the people that don't have this type of video the the original video will always be in my description because if i'm not crediting them i'm stealing from them and, and that makes me feel like a terrible person. So anyone anyone that watches my reaction to a video, you can always go and watch the original video yourself. You don't even have to watch my reaction. Just go to the description and click on the original video if you want to watch it. Like, that. that's how I have it set up. And it just makes sense. Because uh, it, it, in a way, you would be diverting traffic to his video. But if you've already watched me react to it, Bro, just go on there and drop a like. Just go on there and drop a like. It helps them as well. Even if it's just one person. And SS Sniper Wolf. These two have kickstarted these, a on these react reactors are putting enough work into their reaction videos. On YouTube, reaction videos are only allowed if they fall under fair use. Fair, fair use, use is yeah. a copyright law that decides gray. whether or not lot of gray areas. use other people's content without asking for permission. React videos only fall under fair use if the reactor has transformed the content enough to make it their own. Usually, they do this by adding a ton of original commentary. For a while, reaction content has been considered fair use but now that's changed Some what's changed about it now oh yeah Some no these videos don't transform anything instead they're practically re-uploads from the original creator with almost 35 yo million that's crazy ss sniper wolf is one of is the she most still demonetized ever but she's also one of the most controversial many content creators believe she's the face of content theft on the platform due to her low effort and repetitive content one of those content creators being jack's films now we know all about this drama for her daily reaction videos where she reacts to compilations of tiktoks and memes but while she's built a huge audience she's also grown a community of critics who believe yeah. that her videos are not original enough to be considered fair use she doesn't make many comments on the videos that she's watching and in some cases she doesn't even yeah like dude all. that's what i'm talking about just sitting there watching it and not adding anything like dude uh, who wants to watch that? Just go watch the original video at that point. Like, yeah, it's not showing up on their feed, so they have to watch someone else to sit here and get the information to, like, figure it out. But, like, who wants to sit through and just have just have a fake persona in the, in the corner of their video just sitting here mindlessly watching it with you? Like, what is the point of that? And we're all trying to predict what Sniper Wolf will say, how she'll react, etc. Here's my real-time reaction to what happens next. That's why in 2023, Jax Films took to his own YouTube channel to call Sniper yeah. Wolf out for her lazy content. This feud brought up a lot of issues surrounding reactors on YouTube, with content theft being the main one. Creators are complaining that they lose views and money because Sniper Wolf and, doesn't credit. And I don't, I don't know if this is proven to be true or not. I can't, I can't talk on that. But I can talk on you need to be crediting the original creator. Like that, that's literally, I don't know how it works with, with TikTok though, but the original creator should always be credited. I mean, it makes sense. It's their video. It's literally their video. You can't, you can't just take, like download this video, right? And upload it on your channel. That's just theft without crediting and all that, that, that dude.
the original video she reacts to. You're getting exposure from this, right? No, because if someone posts a video on TikTok, they pull the full video on there, sure, you know, you've seen the video, maybe you'll look me up later. Why would you go rewatch the exactly. video? Exactly. Despite this, many of these creators can't even fight back because of Sniper Wolf's massive fan base. So oh, everyone God. everyone claiming, well, at least Sniper Wolf's not hurting anyone, she very much is. Not only does Sniper well, Wolf steal content, she also steals her jokes and her reaction. People are watching Sniper Wolf to see Sniper Wolf, right? Like, she's already established her face as her brand. So, so the people that would have never seen that video, maybe they don't care about that video. Maybe they only care because they like to sit here and watch Sniper Wolf. But the fact that she's not giving original credit it is just blasphemy, bro. It, it, it is it is such an L. And, and then she's just reading the top comments, dude. Oh, God. I don't know how much it actually affects someone's video for you to upload your own reaction. And if you get more views, it could be because people just want to watch it for you, right? The, you being, like, whether your face is on there, whether you're, like, sitting here and they want to listen to your chuckle. Like, it, it, to me, I don't understand what makes it hurtful towards the original creator besides re-uploading it and not giving them credit not giving them credit but i mean i don't know the actions she i never agree with her popular videos crop out the watermark not give credit and then often yeah that that's the so shitty comments from that video and call it her joke she hit it with a hadouken the power to fight death for Although many have spoken up about how Sniper Wolf is a bad example for content creators, YouTube doesn't agree. They actually see Sniper Wolf as a proud representation of the platform to the point that they even praised her on their official Twitter account. Yeah. Many YouTubers were unhappy about this tweet, pointing out that Sniper Wolf isn't exactly the most innovative content creator out there. And even though she posts daily, her videos are repetitive and predictable. Which brings us to why zero value reaction content can be damaging to the platform. If okay. Sniper Wolf can take five minutes to watch a video that took someone five months to make and get ten times the views, it's really discouraging. For it's the only creator. It's what? only because it's her face on it, right? That's the whole reason why she's getting so many views is she already has a fan base centered around like the reactions and whatnot. Reactions, if you want to call it that. But it, people, people go to see her. So whether whether it took you five months to make that video, it doesn't matter. They weren't going to watch your video anyways, right? They went to see Sniper Wolf. For whatever reason, I don't know. She doesn't add anything, right? That's what everyone is saying. But they went They went to see Sniper Wolf. They, they didn't go to see your video. Now, nah, bro, again, always credit, dude. Always credit. So just in case the people, the few people that do want to see more stuff from the original creator, they have that chance to click on it and go and, and and browse all the other stuff that they've made. That makes more sense. Give them the choice of whether they want to watch and continue watching other content that they make or something like that. Like always credit. Why should people spend months writing, recording, and editing high quality videos if someone with a lot of subscribers can just clog up the watch page with derivative gunk and be patted on the head for their ingenuity? On the other hand, I will say that reaction content does help push out the original creator, but only if the creator is yes, properly is, credited yes. in the video. This is just an overview of the Sniper Wolf situation. You can check out my other video, Innocent Lives Ruined by Influencers, if you want to know more about oh, okay, the question. Okay. That was the end. She's done. In the height of all the Jack versus Sniper Wolf drama came another controversy about reaction. But see, but see, the thing is, is now that I've seen this video, it showed up on my feed, right? I'm probably gonna sit through and, and, and browse his collection of videos. That's just how I do things, right? And and if I'm if I'm making a reaction video, then of course, right? So so another thing is is this mini this video has only been 12 minutes into the video right we're only 12 minutes in and my recording is 26 minutes in so i know that i've doubled up on the video and it's probably going to be a long reaction but i know that i'm transforming it because i'm adding my input now sitting here if, if the original video was 28 minutes 
and 41 seconds and I uploaded that, right? What did I add? What did I add to it? Besides talking over him whenever he needs to like finish his sentence or something like that. Just a little, just a little, like I transformed it already, already. And we're not even halfway into the video. Content. This time it came from I'm coping live streamer XQC. Hello chat. Hello chat. I'm glad you just tuned in. Hello, July chat. 24th, 2023 XQC uploaded an almost two hour long video onto his YouTube channel, which has wait. over 2.3 million. Wait, wait, I thought he didn't upload it. I thought he told his, his editors not to upload this video because he was gone for like 10 minutes on a phone call million subscribers the video was clipped from his twitch live stream where he watched the video called the kennedy assassination by youtuber lamino this controversial video Lemino. once again opened the floodgates about whether or not reaction content is real content Wait, because was it not hour and 13 minute video the most transformative okay, yeah, yeah. part about it was him leaving to take a bathroom break xqc's video is almost exclusively just him watching the entirety of another person's 90 minute video this triggered an influx of backlash from other youtubers who accused Used XQC of free writing off of another creator's hard work. I mean, reaping financial rewards via clicks and ad revenue. This controversy stirred a debate between streamers and YouTubers, with XQC and Mudahar from some ordinary gamers at the forefront. On July 28th, Mudahar posted a tweet calling XQC's Lamino reaction video garbage. This launched an entire internet feud between the two creators, with XQC. Wait, hold on. Yeah, uh, I wonder... Defending his actions by saying he was simply watching a video that he liked. Hold on, hold on. I gotta read it. Just a shame garbage like this fills the recommended XQC's tab. Let me know reaction video garbage. This launched an entire... I wonder what triggers people like you so much. Revenue share, audience, split, algorithm. I've heard this complaint a million times and the most popular public figures try to attack it from multiple angles. Just to fall flat on their face. I'm watching a video I like to my people. That's it. Internet feud between the two creators with XQC defending his actions by saying yeah. he was simply watching a video that he liked with his viewers. Mudahar wrote a lengthy reply. Oh my God. I know you're the brightest, but I didn't expect this to be... I didn't expect you to be this int intellectually dishonest sorry uh nothing inherently is triggering when you view live content on a different platform it's when you re-upload the content on the same platform and have it copy the same metadata to further cannibalize uh i get it depends on the creator whose content you're free booting yo dude this guy but in your own words just how can you claim that you were sharing a video with your fans with no intention to critique or transform it for fair use purposes was he just watching the video we de demonetize individuals like jinx back in 2017 and large we do as well today this type of content is even frowned upon by youtube and large or any it's not frowned upon right uh often changes algorithm to fight algorithm abusive content like this i i don't think i don't think it's frowned upon by YouTube to to do React content. Uh, clearly, I mean, explaining that the problem wasn't that he live streamed the reaction, but rather he re uploaded it, it to YouTube with the exact same title as the original, barely adding any commentary. By doing this, XQC could take views away from the original creator. The two went back and forth for days while other creators started choosing sides. On August 1st, 2023, YouTuber Neo Explains posted his own tweet about XQC's pattern of content theft. He uploaded a clip of XQC. This is what I heard. A reaction to his own video. In the clip xqc leaves the room five seconds into the video leaves it playing and comes back 10 minutes later to make a parody reaction do not pose this to youtube for the lack of react boom metal pipe cement football go at the back and this is and this is whenever he said not to re-upload it right and it did not get uploaded chat wait a minute chat hold up I think this is, a, this is a very rare copper alloy right there, chat. Three days later, Ethan Klein from H3H3 also joined the discussion, tweeting out that XQC is a content thief. This led to a live stream debate between Ethan and XQC. In the debate, XQC brought up other live streamers like Hassan Abi, who also re-uploads their live yeah. stream reactions to their YouTube channel. But Ethan was quick to come to Hassan's defense, reading out a message he got from a content creator that both Hassan and XQC have reacted to when xqc does it it's different when he watches my video he always re-uploads the whole thing on his youtube channel with his insightful commentary as wow chat isn't this crazy 
compared to when Hassan watched my stuff, he shouted me out and he says he loves my stuff and he sent a bunch of subscribers to my channel. The debate uh -huh. dragged on for over three like... hours with little progress and things got personal and heated. Frustrated, Ethan left. The... And and the fact that that Ethan is saying this is just wrong because he also used to do this back in the day make react content where he just sits there picks his nose and watches the video right stream abruptly and soon after shared dms between him and xqc no matter how lazy reaction content can be there's still a human element to it unlike this next content farm which takes the creation out of the content. oh here we go here we go ai is taking over AI has become a tool for many content creators, including myself. It's super helpful for brainstorming, but there's a fine line between using it to help you create content versus using it to farm content. QuibbleCop is a YouTuber with over 15 million subscribers. With over 10 years on YouTube, he's been recognized as one of the first gaming creators to really make an impact. But over time, QuibbleCop's vision for content changed. From yeah, one yeah, that yeah. Comes from genuine dedication. I'm pretty sure he fell off, right? It's only focused on making cash. He's ditched everything that's gotten him to where he was in pursuit of one thing, AI. <laughs> Oh my god, the block war is generate. This is insane. No way. So there is literally an animated version of him. Also, the voice. So as far as I'm aware, that isn't Quibble Cop talking. That is either an AI voice or, or someone else talking. In August of 2023, Quibble Cop returned after a break from YouTube with a completely different yeah. look, one that was almost fully computerized. Using AI technology, Quibble Cop created a VTuber-like character paired with an AI voice that's meant to act and talk just like him. Like, like he, he's trying, creators. he's trying to make videos to where he doesn't even have to do anything. Like that, that is so stupid. And that's terrible for YouTube. This is a terrible market to capitalize in because no matter what, at the end of the day, it's not going to do well. Okay. It might do well for, for children for a little bit, but you got to remember kids grow up, right? Everyone grows out of this content for a 100% because it's not relatable content, right? You're not sitting here relating to the person that you're watching. And that's the problem. There's no humanized element, so if everything is a machine, then then what are you watching? What are you watching it for? That use AI, Quibble Cop didn't only use it. To yeah, I don't. I don't think anyone watches him. Like, if we pull up, I'm pretty sure he's like going through it an entire fall off. Essentially used it to replace him. If I want to continue the dream, if I want to build tons and tons and tons of channels that will flourish and shine forever, we need to remove the Why? human element. With this new AI technology, Quibblecop is able to create hundreds of AI-generated videos a week that would replicate his entire persona. Using old footage, the AI learned his speaking style, recreating him through a virtual avatar. When this video was released, it created an outcry in the YouTube community. There were a rare few who praised Quibblebop for being innovative, but most people were upset. If content can be made completely <laughs> from a machine, then what's the point of a content creator? Where Right. Is the passion. It's such a evil dystopian concept to have all of humanity replaced by AI. Yeah, every everything is AI. Computer. Everything is AI from from like uh yeah, everything is AI on Quibble Cop. It is he's done the con complete conversion over to AI content their personality. Long-term fans of the creator were disappointed to see what his channel has become. Many of the comments shared the same view. Quibble Cop changed and not for the better. Other YouTubers criticized Quibble Cop for focusing only on profit instead of working on- Yeah, like quality. he's treating his audience like, like little paychecks. Intended. It is fully completed work without him ever actually being present for it. If you can just crank 20 of these puppies out every day, it's going to add up and probably end up being more lucrative and significantly less work, obviously, than if it was him behind the camera. Yeah. After getting a ton of backlash, Quibble Cop took to Twitter to defend himself. Instead of addressing the concerns of fans, he continued praising his own invention. Eventually, Quibble Cop took down the original Minecraft. Yeah, and then re-uploaded a, a new one. Yeah, like, like this is 100% AI. 
Like he he literally changed everything to be a human AI of himself. Like what? Move that went down in internet history. I made a mistake. Quibble Cop posted a video called "The End of Quibble Cop AI," where we talked about. And now the beginning of Quibble Cop AI V2. Failed. In the video, he also gave viewers a behind-the-scenes look at the development of his AI technologies. But rather than apologizing for causing a controversy, he just Quibble did it Cop again. Didn't seem phased. He was so sure about his vision. At the end of the video, he revealed that this video itself was created by AI. People started pointing out that the lip-syncing was off and that his face looked a bit robotic. This wasn't an apology video. This was another launch video. At this point in time, Quibble Cop is continuing to work on an AI that can replace him on YouTube. He posts regular updates on like, Twitter. Who wants to watch it though? The technology has come. He hopes that by the end of Wait, wait, what did, he, what did he say? What did he say? Can achieve over 1 million views per video. World Oh my god. Bro, there's no way. That has to just be with his his fan base, right? If he creates a new channel and he does the same thing, will it achieve 1 million views per video? ...about just how far the technology has come. He hopes that by the end of 2024, the world's first truly AI influencer will be ready for the spotlight. But is that really what we want the future of YouTube to no. be? No! So I understand the vision. People want to see humans. ...legacy continue even when he's gone. But I don't think replacing yourself with Yo, AI Yo, dude, that's is... the problem, though. That's the problem. You don't know if it's AI. It could be AI and you have no idea, right? As long as long as there's uh at least a little bit of humanized formatting in there, bro, you would never know. You would never know. No, AI today can do so much, and especially if he has the funds to dump resources into building his own AI, like it's unreal the way to do it and this is just the tip yeah. of the iceberg when it comes to ai content farms these shorts generated over 500 million views so today i'm gonna start a similar channel only using ai from editing doing titles and the channel branding ai can make hundreds of videos a week no human being or even an entire production team can match that speed no nope. quality can't compare and at some point the quantity becomes the star AI content farms flood youtube home pages and recommended sections because they can make videos on any topic or in any niche now hold up they can also i tested this i tested this i created a new channel and only did ai right uh i i ran like it's not publicized okay uh i created a brand new channel and i made it to where only only ai content and shorts were made every single i uploaded five times a day five times a day because i made them in bulk and every single one of those videos got zero views within the first month after after i did it for a month entirely in the background no one knew right an entire month every single video that was uploaded on that channel got zero views bro i i don't know what they're doing different but I attempted to do the exact same thing, and it did nothing for a whole month. Uh, it's it's hundreds of videos a week. There's no way an AI is doing a hundred videos a day, bro. The amount of money that you're like dumping into these AI like uh programs to to edit, to format all that. It is actually crazy. So easily copy existing videos. There are tools out there that allow people to rewrite entire YouTube scripts. Pair that with an AI video editor and voiceover. Yeah. You can now copy someone else's content and run an entire content farm just using AI. I watched through it and it was basically the same video, but it was different. The visuals were all crappy stock footage. The writing was stilted 
and it felt like he was just reading Wikipedia. YouTuber yeah. Duncan Clark shared the story about how he found an AI content farm that was copying his channel. His original video had over 1 million views. The channel Apperception copied his entire video, only slightly changing the title and the thumbnail. After going through the copycat channel, it is Duncan terrible, realized yeah. that all of their videos were stolen from other creators. That channel did yep. end up getting deleted, but this is a widespread problem on YouTube. On Reddit, there's been a rise of smaller YouTubers complaining about their content being stolen by AI content farms. Truth is Fiction is a YouTuber who runs a zoology channel with it's not terrible subscribers. On his Reddit AI, post, AI is not terrible. It's what people are doing with AI that makes it terrible, right? AI is a big step for humanity. Uh, it, it, it will eventually help in a lot of fields that need the help. But people don't see it that way. People see it as this is what AI is doing. They're just sitting here making free money off of AI. Like the return is so much higher. And and so it gives it gives AI a bad look. Like you, people people need to understand that AI was not made to do this. Okay. It was not made for uploading shorts and farming a lot of views, stealing other people's content and changing everything. That's not what it was for. It was for helping hu humans advance into the next stage, like with, with medicine, with with science, with all this other stuff. It was not made so that you could cheat your way through school and it create essays for you. Like that that's not what it was made for. It was made for like actual advancement. It was never supposed to be I say supposed to be. It was always going to be this, but it was not made in this light. It was made for advancement. Like again with with medicine all kinds of stuff like that like yeah you, you just have to you just have to see things that way like ai can 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 do so much man it, it can help so much it, you know at the end of the day it could probably find a cure for cancer eventually okay ai it, it takes the collection of information that we already have and it pieces it together for us Yes, it's not, it's not, it, I, I keep saying supposed to, okay, we can't say supposed to, everyone knows that it was eventually gonna be doing this anyways, no matter what, you, you can't, you can't help that, if people are going to twist AI into their own little play thing, right, but in the long term, yeah, this is, this is short term, right, this is only the beginning, in the long term, AI will be will become mandatory. It will it it can end up you know. Eventually, end up protecting cyber attacks. It, it can it can replace jobs, but it, it's jobs that like it needs to embed itself in cybersecurity, um, all kinds of stuff like this, like to prevent data leaks and all that. AI will always be able to update itself. And and keep keep up to tabs with like latest encryption, um, it like I keep I keep harping about it, it. It'll help advance medicine. It'll help advance science. It'll help advance like all kinds of stuff that we can't even think of right now. But we will think of it, and AI will perfect it. AI is not creative. It still needs humans to create, so that AI can put p put the piece of the puzzle together it can't it can't think on its own it will still always need humans to think for it and create something so that ai can perfect it post he talked about how he created a video on a very niche topic but found a copycat just weeks later upon watching it he realized that the video was almost entirely filled with ai generated well images. it's not it's not even yo what's up man uh it's not even that it's a genius way to think about it it's it's not even an outside of the box way to think of it it's just ai can't do anything on its own AI is not it, but see, like, you just don't, you don't see the vision with the people that were creating AI, their vision was not for content farm. That's not what it was for. It's for advancement. And we are going to need AI 
to help us advance. With, regardless of what you think or feel, it doesn't matter. AI is necessary for advancement. It will always be there for us to advance into the next stage. Now, like, people are getting all crazy and whatnot, thinking they're going to implant it into our brains and whatnot. Dude, that is not in our lifetime, okay? You guys don't have to worry about that. But by the time it gets to the stage to where it's implanted into our brain and whatever, we're going to be far long dead, all right? It's goofy right now. They can't even create images because AI is not creative. AI cannot create something that is not already done. You guys will never have to worry about AI. All you have to worry about is the brain rot it produces, which is not the intended purpose of AI. But AI is evolving every single day. For something that, that could be five years into the future, right? It could be a week from now. It shortens time spent on a project, right? It shortens everything. And it's always advancing by the day. Uh, how would you even implant an AI? Uh, I mean, you can you can think of like, uh, what is it called uh, that Elon Musk did, the chip that goes in your brain. Uh, what is it called? Neuralink. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Neuralink. Like eventually, if people people over here are saying saying that that's like the mark of the beast, bro. You are brain dead. Okay, you are brain dead. Uh, something like a neural link will fix your brain. Okay, like you're beyond help. But it, it's a lot of it. A lot of I, I'm going on a tangent, and I need to like relax. The video is already at like 50 minutes long. Okay, a script was stolen with only a few things reworded. <laughs> At least in Duncan's case, he has an audience to back him up when trying to take these content farms down. But for smaller channels like Truth is Fiction, they may not be able to do that. I feel his pain. I mean, there are people that copy our content all the time. Literally, yeah. they steal exactly what I say in the video. I mean, we put weeks into one video for someone to just steal it so fast. But there are other channels that don't use AI to steal. Instead, they use AI to farm stories. It has got more than 4 million views in the last 30 days. The channel has uploaded only 70 videos and it has gained almost 100,000 oh subscribers God. in just four months. AI story times have become one of the fastest growing genres of content farms. These channels can pump out hundreds of videos just by using chat GPT chat prompts and AI voiceovers. And it's not like with Ray William Johnson where he has AI generated images but still implement his own narration. No, these videos are entirely generated by AI. By using AI Wait. to fully create their content, these content farms are able to focus Yo, on yo, new idea, new idea. It's not even my idea, I'm stealing it. Trademark, stolen. I'm gonna create a channel for a month. Another one for a month and see if AI story time actually does that. I guarantee it, if it's in my hands, it will never get 100,000 100, subscribers. Never, bro. Just like my other one that I did for a month of, of doing AI shorts. Zero views. Every single video uploaded five times a day. During YouTube's algorithm. Content farmers spend a lot of time on SEO optimization, watching trends, finding niches, and scanning analytics. The boring stuff. And they're able to spend a lot more time doing this than ordinary creators because they don't actually have to do anything else. AI may be the latest problem, but there's a long running channel that blends all the worst parts of content farms. We've what is it? Lanky Box. YouTube's what is this? Biggest content farm. Lanky Box is easily one of the worst channels on YouTube. Oh Here my God. There's so many cuts. It's made for children. A 1 million percent. The place where dignity goes to die. With almost 40 million subscribers. I've never heard of this. Over 12,000. Is that Puppy Playtime? 
uploads, you would think Lanky Box has been here since the dawn of YouTube, but in reality, they're just the platform's biggest content farm. They upload multiple times a day using the same clickbait titles and thumbnails to keep their viewers coming back. I subscribe to the Lanky Box YouTube channel to see how much content they upload in 24 hours. The results? In 24 hours, Lanky Box uploaded around 10 individual videos and that's just the amount of long Yo. videos they also upload multiple youtube shorts a day which feature those popular characters i mentioned 10 videos a day The problem with Lanky Box is that it's clear their channel is entirely made for profit. Not only do they upload hundreds of videos a month, they also have multiple channels. On Lanky Box's evil quest to monopolize kids' YouTube, they decided one channel wasn't enough. They've created at least five channels to flood the YouTube record. Oh my with God. Dogs. Basically, they're trapping kids in Lanky Box jail. Their videos, like most Brain Rock content farms, have no actual substance to them. The duo behind the channel, Justin and Adam, use every tactic possible to appeal to their kid audience. Despite Justin and Adam's popularity with younger audiences, their videos provide little to no value for them. Their content is characterized by screaming gibberish words and an over-the-top editing style that's meant to keep a kid's attention. I think we should call Garden a bad bit. And Melina will actually talk. Oh to my god, there's so many cuts, it's bro. It's not just their low quality content that puts a target on their back. Lanky Box is also notorious for stealing from other creators. Lanky Box copied the exact thumbnail. No, okay, okay, but like, listen, listen. Is it is it the kid's fault or is it the parent's fault? Dude. Entertainment time? and throwing an iPad in their face? Like, whose fault is that, bro? Is It's not the people that are, that are supplying the demand. It's not their fault. Because the demand is already there. It's parents' faults throwing an iPad in their face when they don't want to parent. I mean, like, I, I would say, like, yeah, China goes a little crazy with it. But, I mean, it's not bad. Only 40 minutes... Restricted to only 40 minutes of, of like, TV and entertainment for people that are under the age of years old. That's not a terrible idea. It's not. But, dude, parenting is not giving your kid an iPad. That's not parenting, bro. That's lazy. That's laziness. On his video, I built a secret attic mansion on top of my best friend's house and adopt me Roblox. In all of their videos, Justin and Adam promote their shop, which sells merchandise of the channel's cartoon mascots. Yeah. They use the likeness of famous franchises like The Amazing Digital Circus and Poppy Playtime to promote their products. Here's an upload to Lanky Box World, role playing with Amazing Digital Circus plushies combined with Lanky Box ones to sell Lanky Box merch. And to add extra scumminess to the situation, the Amazing Digital Circus ones are cheap knockoffs. There are dozens of videos well, like, on YouTube oh, criticizing are. Lanky Box for ruining the platform with low quality spam like videos that are bad for kids. There's still one type of content farm that's the worst of them all. Wait, for real? Low effort, they're no effort. No effort content. Scrolling through YouTube shorts, you'll see a ton of videos featuring popular influencers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it like, uh, I forgot what the website is, but you just, you send in a like 10 or 30 minute video and it will, it will farm like 20 shorts out of it and apply captions. It will do everything for you. And all you have to do is download and then upload. It, it'll tell you the title, it'll tell you the description, it'll do everything for you for the low price of $20 a month. But and, and the return is so high because people like sit here and just watch like what's said on a podcast, but then summarized in, in 10, 20 seconds. You can't believe people watch this. It's summarized content. No one wants to sit through two hours of a video if they can find a short of that same video that summarizes the entire thing or highlights only the good parts. Let's be for real. Summarized? People people worry too much about their time that they spend, right? They want to get on to the next thing. Their attention span is zero, bro. 
They have no attention span. In the form of compilations or highlights, but nine out of yeah. ten times when you highlights. click on the video, it's not from the actual influencer. Nope. That's because the biggest content farm on YouTube is not low quality content, it's stolen content. Many people have found that the secret to success on their platform is, is just stealing. use a popular person's likeness. That's why many YouTube shorts channels have started combining other people's content and AI to mass produce viral videos. Using this method, yep. there's practically Practically zero work needed to make this type of content. I made 100 podcast shorts in less than 10 minutes using AI, hoping to crack the YouTube shorts algorithm, yep. go viral. Wait, which is which is done through Canva, Chat GPT, and and the other, other website I was talking about. Making that easy YouTube money. It's funny because like multiple people were like, "Oh, your video has popped up on my TikTok feed." I was like, "I don't even use TikTok." And sure enough, someone stole our video and got millions of views. Yeah. And small creators aren't safe either. When their videos go viral, content farms often swoop in, re-uploading the videos without permission. The little goblins, bro. Hurt small creators because they lose out on views, revenue, and recognition, while these copycats profit from some. Yo. Work. Even though these content farms were in the wrong, some were completely out of line. This creator, Hoops by Harry, posted a video that went viral on both YouTube and TikTok. When content farms stole his video, Hoops by Harry fought back by issuing copyright strikes. But Ooh. instead of apologizing, the channel who stole his content turned removed, around- Removed their channel just to start a new one and do the same exact thing. Because the return is so much higher than they're paying in legal fees and threatened him. In the Reddit post he made on r slash new that by Harry revealed that he received three emails from one of those content farms threatening him. The channel claimed that they uploaded the video unintentionally and that if Harry didn't remove the copyright strike, they would take legal action. Creators spent countless hours working on their content. I'm working on these videos for you guys 12 hours a day, seven yeah. days a week, even when I'm sick. But if their time and effort isn't rewarded, then there's no reason to keep going. They can't sustain their livelihood. When you're doing YouTube as a side project, you can afford to make the videos you want. But when this is your full-time gig, like it is for people making these goodbye videos, uh -huh. your art has to take a back seat to putting food on the table. The rise of YouTube content farms is a problem that affects creators and viewers alike. They steal from genuine creators, push low quality videos, I don't videos, know, bro. That's a hard one. Only harmful content to kids. As YouTube grows, it's important to remember what made the platform great. Creativity, effort, and originality. If we lose that, then what's the point? Visual venture. If yeah. you guys like this video on content of course. farms, you'd probably like my video on the disturbing rise of brain rock content for kids. Make sure you guys subscribe and then click here to watch it. Love you guys. Peace. Catnap versus dog day, sad stories, sus imposters, skibbity sigma. Yo, dude, uh, that sounds like a video we need to watch, man.